Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I'd like to show you uh, some updated progress on the uh, large hill that I've been building, the proxy weather top. Uh, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I've done with this hill. Uh, what you see here in front of you is the front half of this hill. It's too big to put all in one picture, so I'll be showing you a couple different sides with some up close uh, details of that. But before I do, I wanted to take the opportunity to um, mention one of the products that I've been using on this as a sort of little product introduction in case you're not familiar with this. Um, what I've done over the, maj the majority of this surface that you see in white is I've coated it with a, uh, something called sculpt mold um, sculpt mold comes in a, um, a bag and it's uh, basically um, ground like newspaper fibers impregnated with plaster. Uh, so what you get is you get something that is sort of, I'm not going to take it out of here because it's really dusty and uh, makes a bit of a mess, but you know you can see that it's sort of a loose, a loose clumped material and you add water to that and it makes a uh, material that you can then spread and depending on how much water you add to it you can change its texture so if you add a lot of water to it you can get a very smooth very even surface and if you don't add a lot of water to it you can get a kind of a clumpy finish that can add quite a bit of texture to the, the uh, surface that you're applying it to. Um, Sculpta Mold comes, this is a uh, three pound bag gosh I can't remember what I paid for this though I, it's pretty inexpensive maybe uh, mm, five bucks, ten bucks, something like that. It's really um, relatively cheap. Um, I ordered this from hobbylink.com and um, you can get it, uh, I think, at your local craft stores like, oh, uh, yeah, cat. Um, you can get it at your local um, uh, craft stores like Michael's or something like that. Um, I think they have it in there as well. So um, if you're uh, interested in getting some kind of a material that adds quite a bit of protective uh, coating to something as well as giving you some sculptability, uh, this is kind of um, something that might replace um, uh, something like paper mache in terms of functional use, uh, but it's a little bit easier to mix, a little bit easier to apply, and a little bit stronger when it finishes. So what I've done is I've carved this hill and then I've um, placed rocks on it, uh, much more so in the backside, which you'll see in a minute, and then applied sculpt mold to clean up some of the carving. If you saw my carving video, you know, using those hot wire tools can often leave some, some indents where the wire was going slow and burned in a little bit, or it's just hard to get a smooth surface overall just using the plain wire tools. So what I've done is I've gone back in and smoothed out areas with the sculpt mold finished areas around the rocks with it to seamlessly blend them into the surface of the mountain and, uh, and the, given the effect that you've seen. So, you, that you'll see here, that you've seen from there. Uh, in any case, um, let's take a closer look at it and I can show you some of the features in a little bit more detail. So here you can see a close-up of a small cluster of rocks. Um, the rocks have been, um, you know, they're, they're precast. I've glued them in place, and then I've added a little bit of talus around it. Actually, some of this doesn't look quite right. I'm probably going to chip out a piece or two of this before I go on uh, finishing this further. But it gives you an idea of how you can sort of use this sculpt mold to, you know, push it in around the rocks. And I really like it because not only does it um, give a more of a seamless join to the surface of the mountain, but it also really sets it in place. There's no way this is ever going to come off, um, so you don't have to worry about the glue releasing it or something like that. As the sculpt mold is really uh, quite a durable finish. Um, and over here you can see another rock um, just by itself and again some of that um, sculpting to, to sort of embed it on the mountain and give it a much more realistic transition uh, onto it. You can build up the sculpt mold in layers um, as I've done in several places to kind of you know um, gradually because it takes quite a while to dry uh, as it's water based and a thick layer can take quite a bit of time so it's nice to put it in layers maybe quarter inch thick and that's what I've done over some of these areas. And uh, here you can see um, some of the um, erosional gullies I've tried to carve into the mountain. And I've tried to smooth those transitions out a little bit so it doesn't look too stark. And this is going to get even a little more rounded as uh, when I apply some sand to this. That's going to smooth the contour a little bit more. But it's going to give a nice effect that isn't going to necessarily impede miniature movement. So the um, sculpting is designed to, you know, try to maximize uh, playability uh, as this is the front half of the mountain and it was suggested that I move the top of it towards the back so that I could have a longer front slope so that I could build the mountain up higher and still maintain playability along a good portion of the face. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, having too steep of an angle greater than, say, 20 degrees makes it very tippy for models, and this height to 7 inches allows me to just barely make most of this surface playable. Uh, this is, for instance, this is an unpainted uh, grave guard next unit that I'm working on here. Uh, but, um, you know, gives you a sense of a plastic model on the surface is going to be stable in most places. There are going to be a couple spots where, depending on the facing, it's not going to be stable. As models often have, and this is a good example, they have an uneven center of gravity. This model tends to lean a little bit more forward, and if you really think about it, the center of gravity on this model is lining up you know just about right here so it's going to tend to want to tip a little forward if it's on a particularly steep spot but in some spots it's going to be fine um, so there might be you know a couple places where the models are going to be a little bit uneven uh, depending on the model itself and its facing uh, but the way I've carved the gullies, this should allow for models to traverse most of it um, and not you know fall over um, so most of the surface is going to be very playable. And here you see a shot of the rear of the mountain. Now because the mountain's top has been pushed, and I'm going to try and show you a full shot of the mountain in just a minute, but because the mountain has been pushed back towards the backside, the top is, it means that I have less space for for transition in the back. So I'm going for a vertical transition here with a heavy cliff face that will be impassable uh, along the back side of the mountain. So what I've done here is I've basically soft cast rocks into place. Soft casting, and that's what I'm calling it. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but you make a, a soft latex mold of the rock, fill that with plaster. Once it's mostly set, you place it in place, and then you can cast the rocks directly in place, and it allows you to allow that to conform to the actual texture of the foam, and um, you can tile them together, and you can place larger pieces in one go. Saying that, I've cast a hell of a lot of rocks to, <laughs> to fill the backside of this mountain and, uh, and to go around the sides, and you'll see the sides in a second. Uh, but um, it really produces a very nice effect, and then, you know, sort of stitching in some sculpta mold to fill in the gaps and to texture that a little bit so that it'll blend. When this gets painted up, those seams are going to look very tight and it's going to look like a wonderfully realistic rock facing on the backside of this mountain. And I've gone in and I've added some talus around some key spots and what I'm going to do is uh, rather than try to talus the whole sides is then I'm going to sand this and I'm going to place some foliage pretty dense foliage in a couple spots to tie that together without having to add um, a lot more rocks to it. And the foliage will be pretty pretty quick to place in and put in and uh, we'll really join that together. And now to take a look at the whole mountain as it currently stands. Uh, and it, I'll have to hand hold the camera so I'll try to pan evenly here. But um, you can see the front side here I've left relatively open with the gradual slope. Uh, again, what you just saw in the video uh, previously. And here is something um, that you have to see with the whole mountain assembled. What I've done is I've added a walkway that goes around the back side of the mountain to come up into the back side of the plateau. Um, what I've tried to do is integrate this style of transition on both sides, but vary up the appearance a little bit um, so that it wouldn't look too symmetrical, something I'm trying to avoid. But by doing this, you could have, um, if you've been following the progress of this, and, and, uh, and if you haven't seen the videos, you should go back and look at the, some of the early videos describing the project. But it's required for the scenario that models be able to enter from a couple angles at quite a distance away. So this would facilitate the, you know, the ability of a model to enter and you know, measuring this way, say, 18 to 20 inches or more, and come around the backside. Um, and then have models entering, say, in the far corner over here and access it from over here. So you have a lot of options for the ways that you could play this hill, different access points to it. And here, because I've, I've had to preserve a very gradual slope to come up to this side here, what I've done is put another cliff face in on this side so that I could elevate this section up a couple inches, again with more of the rocks cast in place. Um, and, uh, and a couple more outcroppings here and there, just to break it up and to keep it visually interesting. And then you can see, panning back, what the backside is going to look like roughly at this point. And of course, my lonely grave guard there 
you know, to give you a sense of scale of the overall size of the mountain. Mountain is, again, it's approximately 40 inches in diameter. It's ended up a little bit more square than I had hoped, but it's very difficult to shave down these corners much more and still preserve a, you know, an access point um, for the models, especially where the models need to maybe want to enter from the front side and still be able to come around to enter uh, this walkway to come up along the back side. If I were to shave this off, say to here, then I'm gonna have a very steep transition here and I might not be able to have full access to this walkway, which is something I wanted to preserve. So again, always looking for compromises and playability and appearance and overall um, visual appeal. So for some final thoughts on where the uh, piece is at and where it's going, uh, one thing that I've been um, you know, trying to be conscious of uh, going forward is the, you know, the structural integrity of the edges. Um, because this piece is going to be relatively heavy, each of the quarters, particularly the back side of the mountain where there's so much plaster that's been attached to it, um, it's, it's quite a heavy piece already. This is before adding sand and flock and all of that, which may not sound like a lot, but can add significant amounts of weight. Um, in order to preserve the integrity of the edges, what I've done is I've tried to create a fairly steep transition right at the edge so I could preserve some thickness at the ends to try to make them a little bit more durable. I am going to coat um, all of the uh, back sides and the corners with styroplast to give these edges um, a little bit more durability as well. And I'm going to um, lap that styroplast up over the edges and give this a bit of a coating to build it up and give it a little bit more strength as well. I think that's going to be sufficient to build them up um, and is about probably the most I can do um, to preserve it. Of course, some, some general care and use will be required, but I think overall it's going to be a fairly uh, rigid piece that's going to hold up well over many, ga many games of play. Uh, many games of play. You, you know what I mean. Uh, so, um, and I was originally planning, as a final thought, um, uh, uh, foam coating the surface, but at this point, so much of the surface has the sculptor mold on it, it's really already significantly reinforced, and I don't think it's going to need foam coating at this point, which is nice to be able to omit that step, uh, because I'm already running a little over budget myself on time-wise on this project. I was hoping to get it done in about 10 hours, and I'm about almost 9 in now, so clearly I have a few more hours to go on it. Uh, but it's going to move forward pretty quickly from here as most of the effort and time has been putting into the rocks which, uh, and the backside of the cliff, which took quite a bit of casting over several days. Uh, but, it, but I was glad to do it, um, not only uh, for this project, but also as a technique to apply to future projects as well. Um, if you've uh, been following the plateau end caps, which I did recently, um, that is a first phase of a much larger project, and in subsequent segments of that project, I'd like to apply that same style of cliff facing to some of the sections of the plateau end caps to break up their appearance, really give some more variability and some real dramatic impact to the transition, uh, and I think it's going to add some nice variability to that project. So I'm excited to have kind of gotten the uh, my feet really wet with that kind of a casting uh, technique on this project, and I think it's coming out very well. You know, expect to see it on some future ones. So. I think I'm running long on this video, but there's a lot to look at. So um, thank you for joining me. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below in the uh, comments section. Um, if you want to contact me, my uh, email is mike at terrenscapes.com. I'm happy to answer questions and, uh, and provide feedback. Uh, you know, if you have interest uh, in um, you know, some of the techniques that I've used, try to give you some hints and point you in the right directions. Um, and of course, you should always um, visit terrenscapes.com to see the newsletter that I have there that I post to update you know how the site is going where the business is going and um, there's contact information there as well as photos of all the projects that I've done to date so once again thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with another video